Welcome, Vamakshi. L&T Finance is the stock that you've picked out for us today. Uh, why is this one in focus? Well, Vani, this counter is in focus on the back of its earnings. Uh, now, when we look at the numbers overall, they do look like a good set of numbers that have come in for this counter. Uh, NII saw an uptick of almost 14% on a year-on-year -year basis. In fact, the company most importantly managed to achieve most of their Luxure 2026 targets. Now, this is the guidance that the company had given just a short while ago. And uh, in fact, uh, they have managed to achieve all of those targets other than that, when we look at the, the net profit, that number has almost doubled. So, PAT has come in at 500, uh, 531 odd crores. Uh, it has more than doubled from 262 odd crores that we saw in the same quarter last year. Now, definitely analysts were expecting a good growth as far as retail disbursements were concerned. And that has played out as well for L&T fin uh, Finance Holdings. So on the back of that, we do have this counter in, in focus today. Now, yesterday before the earnings actually came out, the stock was surging in trade today. And uh, today, unfortunately, the stock is tanking lower in trade today, down nearly 2.5% as we speak. LNT Finance is under pressure, but let's understand more about the outlook going ahead. For that, we are being joined by Deena Me, Deena Nath uh, Dubashi, who is the Managing Director and CEO of LNT Finance Holdings. Hi, very good uh, afternoon, Mr. Dubashish. Um, the retail book growth is healthy, but do you see this momentum sustaining through the rest of the year? Because on one hand, you have bottom uh, bottom of the pyramid borrowers benefiting on account of the inflation, while on the other hand, the con urban consumer discretionary categories are seeing some bit of a sluggishness. So what's the outlook on this one? Way to sustain growth is to farm your existing customers. That is something we were not doing well at all till about 18 months back. As of now, we have 2.1 crore database of existing customers. And over the last about 18 months, we have invested a lot in data analytics to make to see how we can cross-sell and upsell to these customers. Uh, to such extent that we even changed the organization. If you would remember, um, about 18 months back, our organization was product line based. From that, we shifted it to customer line based. So we have one line now for rural businesses. We have another line for rural individuals, then urban businesses and urban individuals. So now there will be hook products for each one of them and then cross-sell products for each one of them. I will just give you some headline numbers. Today, 34% of all disbursements happen to existing customers. 34%. So now you see, now this 34% suddenly becomes our, our right, our business. It's like our business to do. That is not as seasonal as new business. And as this percentage increases, the company will be more and more sort of insulated, if not completely protected from seasonality. That is why, okay, will we grow 34%, 35% every year? I don't know. Maybe there will be years that we will grow at 28-29%. Maybe there will be years where we will grow at 40%. I don't know. But that kind of growth rate of 25% plus, we are quite confident of maintaining because of this deep-rooted and long-term strategy that we have adopted of farming our existing customer. And that is going very well. I hope that answers your question. I'm confident on the grow, uh, growth ahead, but Mr. Dubashi, like you mentioned that most of the Luxure 2026 targets have already been achieved. But now, would you be looking at revisiting this guidance and maybe upping the ante? Good question. So you see what has been achieved, right? It has been achieved. All the targets are in terms of ratios. So whether it is a retail percentage. So we have achieved 80 for 82 percent. We already set a target of 90. That there is no surprise in that. That I have told last quarter itself. That we will achieve 90% in 2024 itself. Now all others are ratios. Whether it's a asset quality. Whether it is profits. Now having achieved these ratios. The target is going to be very simple. To achieve this growth of a minimum of 25%. Year upon year upon year. Till 26. Till the year 26. While keeping this profitability and asset quality intact. The ideal, we should be able to deliver that quarter upon quarter steadily till everybody comes to know LNT Finance as a company which delivers steady growth 
had steady asset quality and steady profitability uh, quarter upon quarter upon quarter. That was the purpose of Lakshya 26 and that remains the same. So, you know, when I say we have achieved the target, it is not the target in terms of balance, retail balance sheet size that we want. Uh, that needs to be achieved. But what I meant was the quality of uh, Lakshya, the ratios of Lakshya have been achieved. And now having achieved this, we have to maintain these ratios and achieve this growth year upon year. Okay, your NII is up 14%, your PPOP is up 8%, but PAT has more than doubled. For the interest of our viewers, could you highlight some of the factors leading to this? Oh, very clearly, it's a big reduction in, uh, in uh, credit cost. If you take the consolidated uh, uh, number, <laughs> credit cost has come down to almost 40% from uh, close to 800 crores last year to 475 crores this year. Uh, as asset quality is stabilizing and improving continuously, we are seeing uh, zero DPD uh, improving. We are seeing uh, uh, current uh, bucket collection efficiency improving. We are seeing uh, NPA ratios improving. As these improve, uh, very clearly uh, credit cost is going to uh, you know, be low like it is in Q1. Also, I would like to point out that Q1 last year, there was also an impact of the one-time restructuring of uh, uh, some of our products that we had done during COVID uh, becoming NPA. And that impact was there in last year Q1. But uh, this uh, big uh, improvement in credit cost is what is driving the profitability very clearly. Along with, of course, sustainable growth and good margins. Okay, Mr. Dwashi, in our last interaction, you had indicated that the cost of the funds could rise by 25 to 30 basis points over the next two quarters. Has this panned out as per your expectations? And how do you see the borrowing cost to pan out from here on? I think, generally speaking, if we say, we are now in a prolonged period of stabilization. So, uh, if you see from last quarter, our increase is only six basis points, which is clearly less than what even I had expected. You know, I had expected 10 to 15 basis point increase in one quarter itself. As you had said, I had talked about 20 to 30 basis points over two quarters. Uh, but in this quarter, we have seen only a six basis points uh, increase. So uh, we believe that cost of funds should stabilize around this. Level. That doesn't mean that it can't go up by 10, 15 basis points. These increases can happen. Uh, but generally speaking, you see over the next four to six quarters, we don't see any big uh, increase, either increase or big reduction in cost of, cost of funds. Uh, we believe that we are in for a prolonged period of steady cost of funds and steady margins, which will encourage us uh, very much because all the, as, as economies of scales kick in, uh, cost of operations, cost of credit, uh, will trend downwards and uh, at steady margins, it is great for the profitability. Uh, your asset quality has improved and is well within the, your targeted range, but from here on, given the kind of the disbursements you are doing, what is the NPA formation on the incremental book? And wanted to get a sense on how your asset quality is expected to move ahead. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, very, very good question. Uh, see, the way to monitor this, which I always say, is monitor your zero DP. The way to monitor 90 plus is monitor zero DP first. Stop the flow from there, and then your 90 plus will be good anyway. Right? And that is another advantage of doing that, is you can see well in the future that how your asset quality is going. And uh, I can sound very confident here, uh, our asset quality has been continuously improving. Uh, the next stage three is in the area of 0.7, which I believe is a very healthy level. And we aim to stay at that around uh, between 0.65 to 0.75 level throughout as we go ahead. 
Okay, Mr. Devashi, you were instrumental in shaping up the organization that LNT Finance is today. But with your super annuation uh, next year and Mr. Roy taking over, what are the tran transition plans in place and what's next for LNT Finance and how would your role evolve from here on? I am MD CEO till 23rd of Jan, and after that, I will remain on the board for three and a half more months. And on April 30th, I will retire. Uh, so that's as simple as that. Uh, after that, there will be no role uh, in the company. Uh, I uh, plan to follow my own interests as we go ahead. Now, talking about the transition, uh, this is a company uh, like most companies in LNT Group. We believe in very, very strong management bandwidth and uh, one person uh, will should not make a difference. That's uh, the philosophy that we follow. We have a very set uh, business plan, a very set strategy, a strong uh, GC as we call it, which is in the second layer. Uh, Sudipta has already joined us. Uh, he will be... Uh, within the company for close to uh, what, July uh, eight months uh, before he takes over as MD CEO. He is currently CEO, will be looking after all the businesses. So this en entire transition plan has our own LNT mark of uh, planned and you know very planned in detail and gradual uh, transition as we go ahead. Okay, with this, we let you go on that, Mr. Debashi. It was great having you on the channel and thank you so much for joining us today. So that was the management of LNT Finance, sounding very confident on the growth outlook going ahead and also highlighting that the asset quality has been improving uh, quarter after quarter for this particular company. But moving on, let's